Hey guys, welcome back to CloudTech. So in this video, I am going to discuss Spring Boot interview questions, which were asked in Capgemini's second round of interview. The candidate had 2.9 years of experience working as a Java developer, and apart from Java, he was having knowledge about latest features in Java, like JDK 8, then Spring Boot, and REST APIs. In the first round, he was asked to write a Java coding program, where he had to find the count of each character in the given string. So he was provided a string, and he was asked to write a Java 8 program to find the count of each character in the given string. And apart from that, he was asked few Java related theory questions. And in second round, he was asked few Spring Boot related interview questions. So when he answered all these questions and solved the Java 8 coding problem, he was offered a CTC of say 8.7 LPA. Now let me tell you what were the interview questions which were asked in second round. So the first question which was asked in the uh, interview was, uh, what is the use of AdDirect Spring Boot application? So this say AdDirect Spring Boot application is basically a combination of AdDirect configuration, AdDirect enable auto configuration, and AdDirect component scan annotation. So this AdDirect configuration annotation indicates that this class is going to be a configuration class, which will have a lot of things which are required in your application. AdDirect auto enable auto configuration indicates that this class or this application is going to allow the automatic configuration of your beans and then it is uh, adirect component scan annotation will indicate that the application or the beans which are defined will be scanned in your application the next question was how to disable a specific auto configuration class so here you can use a direct enable auto configuration along with exclude property to disable a specific class from auto configuration. So here you can use exclude property along with class name and that class will be excluded from your auto configuration. Then it was he was asked why to use a Spring Boot over Spring Framework. So there are a few advantages of Spring Boot application over a Spring Framework. So let's see what are those. So basically Spring Boot is a framework which was built on top of your Spring Framework to simplify the development and deployment of your Spring-based applications. Now, these are the few advantages of Spring Boot over Spring Framework. So first advantage is simplified configuration. So when you were building applications using Spring Framework, there was a lot of boilerplate code which was required. But by using Spring Boot application, you can simply use Spring Initializer to create a Spring Boot application by mentioning the dependencies and you don't need to write a lot of boilerplate code that will give you a production ready application you just need to import that application into your one of the editor like eclipse and you can run the main class by using run as java application second is dependency management so swing boot provides a lot of data dependencies and along with their transitive dependencies or you don't need to mention the versions of those dependencies the next is embedded web server. So you need to deploy your application on one of the <coughs> web server. For that, you were required to configure a Tomcat server or any other web server to deploy your application in case of Spring Framework. But in case of Spring Boot, it uh, provides uh, embedded uh, web server. So let us consider you are using a web starter dependency. So that web starter dependency comes with a uh, Tomcat as an embedded server and your application will be automatically deployed on your Tomcat server as a default server. Then application packaging. So you can generate jar or war file which can be deployed on your web server. And then it provides production ready features like uh, checking health of your application or checking the matrices or monitoring your application health or centralized looking. So these are the few features which makes us the use of Spring Boot over a Spring Framework. Then uh, he was asked a question like, can we create a non-web application in Spring Boot? So yes, we can create the non-web application in Spring Boot by excluding a web starter dependency. Then the next question was, can we, what is the default port of Tomcat in Spring Boot on which the application runs? Then can we change it and how to change it? So the answer is yes. Uh, the default port is 8080 on which your application runs. And then we can change it. Yes, we can change the 
port number by updating application dot properties file with a property server dot port, and you can mention the port on which your application should run. The next question which was asked is what is a Spring actuator and what are the advantages of it? So basically, Spring actuator is used or it helps you to monitor and manage your application when you push it into a production. It provides a lot of endpoints which we will see in the next or upcoming slide. And to enable the Spring actuator, you need to add a Spring Boot starter actuator dependency in your form.xml file. Now, she was asked, what are the actuator endpoints which are used for monitoring the Spring Boot application? So you can see there are lots of actuator endpoints which can be used in your application. So actuator slash health, this endpoint basically provides the information about your health of your application. Then actuator slash info, this endpoint basically provides custom information about your application. Then actuator loggers, this endpoint allows you to view and modify the logging configuration of your application at runtime. Then if you want to retrieve the information about all the beans which are there in your application, you can use actuator slash beans. Then if you want to read the environment properties of your application, then you can use actuator slash env endpoint. The next question which was asked is which embedded web server is available in Spring Boot Web Starter and can we change it and how to change it? So the default web server which comes with Web Starter dependency is Tomcat. Okay, and if we want to change it, then we need to exclude the Tomcat dependency from Web Starter, Starter Web Dependency. So here you can see we have a dependency which is Spring Boot Starter Web and inside that uh, we need to exclude the Tomcat dependency that will remove the Tomcat web server which was an embedded web server. Then uh, they might ask you to write a CRUD example or Spring Boot web application flow or they will ask you how the Spring Boot application works. So basically when there is a request from UI side or client side, the request goes to controller layer at controller layer, it invokes an endpoint and based on that endpoint, it invokes a method associated with that endpoint. And then the request goes to service layer. From service layer, it goes to repository layer. And from repository layer, it goes to database. It fetches or gives data from database. Then it will come back to repository layer. From repository layer, it will go back to service layer. And then from service layer, it will go to controller layer. And from controller layer, it will send back to the client of the UI. Okay guys, so that's it from this video. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe and let us know your feedback in the comment section. Thank you, bye bye.